Well, we finally got through all the cutscenes. Um, with uh, with everything that's happened, I figured I'd dedicate this last video to um, to showing off a few things. First and foremost, the Royal Handmaiden has the other two special items: the festive Chirashi Zushi and the festive Sushi Balls. Shut up. I didn't say anything. But you're chortling back there. I can hear you. Oh, come on. I mean... Balls. You also can get peach confetti for 10 gil a piece and cherry confetti as well. Um... But, uh, before we go... A couple of interesting things. Many of you have probably wondered what Little Lady's Day is based off of in the real world. And it's actually based on, Well, obviously, it's based off of a Japanese holiday. It, hold on, I need to find it here. Uh. There it is. So, the name of the holiday is Hina Matsuri, also called Dolls Day or Girls Day. It's a special day celebrated each year on March 3rd. Oh, happy birthday to you. <laughs> and basically, it's one of five seasonal festivals that are held on auspicious dates of the Chinese calendar. I thought it was Japanese. I guess they go by the Chinese calendar or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. But yeah, but I know you heard the gist of it, but have you heard the entirety of the Legend of the Lost Lady? Is it based off the story of Princess Kaguya? Um, or the it, bamboo princess? I don't know. But allow me to end this little uh, episode stream with the legend of the lost lady. The full legend and not an abridged version from Rodolph. Three centuries passed in the city-state of Ulda. There was an iron-fisted sultan by the name of Baldric Thorn. A man feared across the region for his quick temper and even swifter justice. Perhaps as punishment for his compassionless ways, the Twelve saw fit to bless the Sultan with but a single, with but a single daughter. The Princess Edvia. The Sultan loved Edvia more than the sun and the moons, and it was this love that drove Baldric to take measures that would ensure that no harm ever befell the princess, including her confinement to the royal palace and the assignment of a retinue of over 50 handmaidens and seneschals. As the princess grew older, however, a longing to explore the unknown land that lay beyond the palace walls tugged at her soul. Until one day, in a devilish display of wit, she switched clothes with a miller girl come to the palace with her mother to deliver flour to the kitchens. Once Edvia had exchanged her beautiful gown and tiara for the soiled rags of a commoner, it proved little trouble to pass unnoticed through her legion of servants and slip out into the city for a day of wicked fun. It didn't take long for the palace to realize something was afoot. And upon discovering that his only daughter was missing, the Sultan, overcome with rage, immediately ordered the Sultanate's entire standing army to scour the city until they had found the princess. As for the royal imposter, thinking that Envia may have been kidnapped by the girl's mother, the Sultan art ordered the miller's house torn apart, her family arrested, tortured, and thrown into the royal oubliette. 
As luck would have it, the princess had not wandered far from the palace and was discovered in a nearby market by her father's men. Once back in the safety of the palace, Edviad revealed the whole ruse to her father, explaining that she had conjured it on her own and begged that, she, that he sow mercy to the miller's family. Upon realizing that the atrocities committed to the Miller girl and her family were without warrant, he had the family released from the Ublet and summoned to the royal audience chamber. Here, not only did he personally apologize to the family and ordered the royal architects to design and build them a new home, but in a move most unexpected, Baldrick himself ordered to serve was offered to serve as the daughter's seneschal for a full day, saying that no young woman, regardless of her standing, should be denied the respect due all citizens of the Sultanate, that all girls, common or noble, are ladies in their own right. Rumors of this unforeseen display of humility were quick to spread throughout Ulda, and ultimately proved to be extremely well received amongst the small folk who, until then, had per perceived their leader as little more than a heartless despot. So well received were they, in fact, that the Sultan declared one day from each solar year on which he would select vi via lots a common girl from the city and serve as her personal seneschal as he had done with the miller's daughter. Not bad, huh? But yeah, that is the legend of the lost lady. I, uh, I used to read that one every year, so it feels good to go back to old times. I mean, I've only been playing this game for five years, but still. <laughs> but anyway, with that being said, I want to thank you all for pushing through to the end of these Little Ladies Day videos. I once again want to thank... Ieyasu Shinokami and Arya Stormborn for joining me on this endeavor. You're welcome. And thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the show. As always, if you're watching this on Twitch or live with PlayStation and you like this show, feel free to hit the follow button below and be sure to turn on notifications so you're informed of all of my live streams and videos the moment they premiere. Also, be sure to subscribe to me to subsidize my gaming addiction. It's not an addiction. If you're watching this on YouTube and you like this video, click the like button below and leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel by clicking here. Click here to watch more by me. Click here to watch the next video. And click here to watch any of the previous ones. Until next time, Cruzic X. Signing out.